What's going on everybody i hope you're doing well it's uh, been a few months since i last put out a video here is what started off as uh me deciding i was going to take a little bit of time off around the holidays and the new year somehow has fast forwarded to suddenly it's the middle of march and i'm just now getting back at it but i'm back and today i want to run through really quickly a pretty straightforward but not necessarily intuitive way that you can invert an entire mask group within lightroom this is something if you're familiar with Lightroom masking or you've watched my deep dive tutorial that I put out back in October when Lightroom Classic 11 and Lightroom 5 came out, you can invert individual masks, but currently as it stands today in March of 2022, there's no way to invert an entire mask group or combination of masks that you put together in a single group. I do have a written version of this tutorial as well over on my blog on my website. So if you wanna take a look at that and have it as a reference while you're working, I'll drop a link in the description below. Otherwise, let's just jump right into Lightroom Classic and take a look at our first example. I'll follow that up with another example in Lightroom Desktop, AKA Lightroom Cloud or Lightroom CC, AKA the non-classic version of Lightroom since it does look a little bit different. Uh, however, the steps are the exact same. You'll get to see two different examples of how you can invert an entire mask group. And of course, if you enjoy this video, if you find it helpful, please do give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can continue to follow along as I release new videos going forward and turn on that notification bell so you get notified as well when I do release more videos, hopefully in the near future. And we're not going three, four months with a, uh, a gap between now and my next one. Okay, so let's start out with this particular image. This is the one I used in my written tutorial over on my blog on my website. If we come into the masking panel here and open it up, you'll see that I've already got a mask created for the subject person only. If I click on this a couple times, that's gonna open up the sub mask within this mask group. This is not just a single mask here, but it is a mask group. So I have a subject mask. If I hover on this, you can see that it's selected the individual in the frame, not surprising. But I did have to make a couple of tweaks to this to get the mask that I wanted, which is the end result here. If I toggle the overlay on and actually come in here and change it to white on black, you can see that in the final mask here, I have excluded the pumpkin from the mask itself. Whereas originally on the original subject mask, it included the pumpkin. You'll also notice on his right shoulder, on your left side, that there's a little bit of a smudge where the color of his jacket blended in a little bit with the background. So I had to go in and fix that as well with a brush stroke that I subtracted from the original subject mask. And I excluded that pumpkin with the subtraction mask as well to get this final one. So I've got a somewhat complex mask group here, but let's say I wanna actually edit the background here. I want to have this entire mask group inverted, but again, there's no way to do this with a simple click of a button or selection of an option. If I right click on the mask group, there's nothing here to invert the group itself. I can invert the individual masks within here, but that's not going to do what we want either. For instance, if I come in and I do invert exclude pumpkin, now all I'm actually doing is including the pumpkin and nothing else within the image. Additionally, if I come over and I invert the jacket mask, where I made that little correction on his shoulder, now suddenly I've included nothing here at all. And even if I invert the subject mask, I still have nothing actually selected as a mask now within this image. So I'm gonna do some quick undos here. So let me change this back to a color mask really quickly so you can kind of see the image as I'm working on it. I'm gonna switch this back to a color overlay. So if I can't invert each of the individual masks within here, how do I go about inverting the entire mask group that we've got here for the subject person only so that I'm working on the background? So the key to inverting an entire mask group is you wanna start with your primary mask, which is this subject one mask on the bottom of the group here. If I right click on this and I go ahead and select invert, You'll see that now I've got pretty close to what I want. I've got the background selected now as the actual masked area, which means that's the area that will receive any adjustments that I make. But now currently it's not fully inverted. Because again, if you look at his shoulder here, you'll notice that there's actually, let me zoom in on this, part of the background that is not masked. Because that's where I made that little correction to the AI generated smart mask for subject one. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna to come to refine jacket mask. Now keep in mind that originally that area was subtracted from that original mask. So now what I wanna do is convert that from a subtracted mask to an added mask. So I'm gonna right click on this refine jacket mask that I've already got here. I'm gonna to convert to add. Now watch his shoulder and watch what happens as soon as I click convert to add. Boom, 
right there, if I undo it and redo it, you can watch in that shoulder spot there that now that background spot is being added in because I converted this brush stroke from a subtraction to an addition. Now I've got another decision to make here. So if my intent on this particular one is to just work on the background of the image, I don't necessarily want to change anything with this pumpkin mask because right now, if I hover on it, the pumpkin itself is masked, but as part of the group, because this is a subtract, it's being subtracted from the overall mask. So subtracted from anything that would be considered the background, which is what I actually want. Now, if I were to come in here and right click on it and convert to add from the subtract that it was originally, you can see, of course, now the pumpkin's getting added in as part of the mask. So again, any adjustments I would make, the pumpkin would be included in that. But in this case, I'm only really wanting to adjust the background. So I'm gonna go in and right click this again and convert it back to a subtracted mask. And now if I hit the O key to turn off the overlay, I can do what I want with the background, darken it down, maybe take out some texture to blur it a little bit more, what have you. And nothing within the subject itself, including the pumpkin in this case, is gonna be impacted. Now I've done all that. Ordinarily, what you're gonna actually wanna do is, and let me go back to my history here and undo all of this. So normally what you would actually wanna do is rather than taking your existing mask group that you've got, you're probably gonna to wanna to duplicate it first. Now I've gone back in the history and I've taken this back to the original mask group here where the subject is included and the pumpkin is excluded from the mask. One other little tip here is, let's say that I did want to make adjustments on the subject himself. Maybe I want to brighten them up a little bit. Maybe I want to lift those shadows. So I don't necessarily want to start inverting this particular mask group. So all you're going to do in that case is to preserve this original mask group I've created. I'm just going to right click on it. And I'm going to duplicate this mask group subject person only. Now you can see I've got subject person only copy. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this and I'm gonna rename it as background only. Now we just repeat the steps that I already showed you. So I'm gonna come down to that primary mask within the mask group. In this case, it's subject one. I'm gonna invert that. And again, if I come out of here and zoom in on his shoulder, and hit the O key to turn on the overlay. Because I've inverted that subject mask, we've got the background selected, but this brush is still being subtracted from that primary mask. So again, I'm gonna come into the refined jacket mask, right click, switch that convert to add, and now that spot by the shoulder gets filled in as we would want to do. And once again, we're gonna leave the pumpkin alone in this case, so we're actually only inverting the primary subject mask and then that jacket mask. So now I've got the mask selection that I want. If I hit the O key again to turn off the overlay, now, as we've already seen, we can just come in here and start tweaking the background as we want. Now let's jump over to the Lightroom desktop app and take a look at the same concept within that app. These steps are exactly the same, but the app does look a little bit different because obviously it is the other version of Lightroom. All right, so now we're in Lightroom desktop or Lightroom CC as you may be more familiar with it as it was previously called. Regardless, we're gonna come over and open our mask panel for this particular image. You can see I've already got two masks in here. I've got a mask that's an intersection of two masks. So on this one, this is a sky selection that I intersected with a luminance range. So in this case, the mask group that I've built is telling Lightroom, I only want this mask applied where the sky intersects with or overlaps with a luminance range that's based on the shadows. And if I click on this luminance range, you can see that it's kind of a, a mid-tone range that I've selected for those darker tones within the sky which gives me that sky mask only in those darker tones. In the same regard, I've got a sky highlights mask group created here. Where if I click on this, you can see same thing. I've got a sky one or a sky mask selected in here. And then I've intersected that with a luminance range mask for the highlights. So this mask grouping is now applying the mask only to the areas of the sky that fall within that highlight range. So let's say I wanted to invert this for some reason. I want to impact the foreground and I want to impact the shadows of the sky on a new mask. So let's go ahead and just collapse this down. I'm going to right click. I'm going to duplicate this sky highlights group. So now I have sky highlights copy in here. It's the exact same as the sky highlights. I'm going to go ahead and right click and rename. I'm going to say foreground plus sky shadows. Expand this out. And again, we want to start with inverting the primary mask within the group, which is going to be the one at the bottom. So sky one in this case. I'm going to right click on this 
invert that sky selection. So now you can see immediately that that is now being applied strictly to the foreground because it's the invert of the sky mask. And I haven't done anything with this luminance range yet, which is still on the highlight end of the spectrum. So now if I look at the mask group and where it's being applied, it's only being applied to the highlights within the foreground because again, I've already inverted that sky selection. So only the foreground elements or the non-sky elements are going to be impacted and it's still intersecting with that highlights luminance range. So it's only going to impact again the land not the sky where it intersects with those highlights but for the sake of the example of inverting the entire group I'm going to come in here to this luminance range mask I'm going to right click it I'm going to convert it to add and now suddenly you can see a dramatic difference in what the image looks like because it's applied all of the adjustments that had been in the sky to the foreground and those darker tones of the sky here. So if I look at this now, you can see that the foreground and the darker shadow tones in the sky are what's being impacted. Let me collapse this down real quickly. So there's what we have now, the inverted sky highlights mask, which is now foreground darks mask. You can see that's what the original mask group did. And this is what the inverted mask group did. Now, there may not be a real practical application in this particular case, but again, it's an example of how you would take a more complex mask group and do a complete inversion of it so that you're impacting the opposite areas of the image from what the original group was doing. All right, and there you go. That's all there is to it. As I said in the introduction, it's not really all that difficult, but it's also not necessarily the most intuitive thing. I do suspect that Adobe will be addressing this in a future update and giving either a tick box or a button to do an inversion of an entire mask group. But for the time being, this is the way we've got to do it. Now you know, and again, if you did find this helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to continue to follow along and turn on those notifications so you know when I do release new videos. I'm hoping to get back on a more regular cadence again with tutorials and hopefully some in-field videos and some new stuff that uh, I haven't really been able to do in the past. So continue to follow along and until next time, take care.